Good morning, everyone, and uh, welcome to our Sunday morning worship here on the 6th of February. It's good to have you with us and welcome wherever you're gathering in worship from, whether it's here in the Netherlands, within Amish Fort, or in other places. You're very welcome. All Saints is a church that holds as core uh, the values of up, in, and out. The importance of worship and prayer, up. The value of deep community and lifelong discipleship, in. And the importance of evangelism and service of others, out. And so as we begin our worship together, let's be still for a few moments before the greeting. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Let's sing together our opening song. As we are beginning our worship, we now come to prayers of penitence. Human sin disfigures the whole creation, which groans with eager longing for God's redemption. And so we confess our sins in penitence and faith, first taking a few moments for our personal reflection. We pray together. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image to the glory of his name. 
Amen. Let everything be said and done in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God through Jesus Christ. Sing psalms, hymns and sacred songs. Let us sing to God with thankful hearts. Open our lips, Lord, and we shall praise your name. We say together the words of the Vanity, a song of triumph. O come, let us sing to the Lord. Let let us heartily rejoice in the rock of our salvation. Let us come into his presence with thanksgiving and be glad in him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the depths of the earth and the heights of the mountains are his also. The sea is his, for he made it and his hands have moulded the dry land. Come, let us worship and bow down, and kneel before the Lord our Maker, for he is our God. We are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We continue our praise in in the next two songs.
So we now come to the Word of God and so we open our hearts to listen for God's Word to us this day. and We open our wills to yield to His Word this day. Psalm 104. Praise the Lord my soul. Lord my God, you are very great. You are clothed with splendour and majesty. The Lord wraps himself in light as with a garment. He stretches out the heavens like a tent and lays the beams of his upper chambers on their waters. He makes the clouds his chariot and rides on the wings of the wind. He makes winds his messengers, flames of fire his servants. He set the earth on its foundations. It can never be moved. You covered it with the waterly depths as with a garment. The waters stood above the mountains. But at your rebuke the waters fled. At the sound of your thunder they took to flight. They flowed over the mountains, they went down into the valleys, to a place you assigned for them. You set a boundary they cannot cross. Never again will they cover the earth. He makes springs pour water into the ravines. It flows between the mountains. They give water to all the beasts, of the field, the wild donkeys quench their thirst, the birds of the sky nest by the waters, they sing among the branches. He waters the mountains from his upper chambers. The land is satisfied by the fruit of his work. He makes grass grow for the cattle, plants for the people to cultivate, bringing forth food from the earth, wine that gladdens human hearts, oil to make their faces shine, and bread that sustains their hearts. The trees of the Lord are well watered, the cedars of Lebanon that he planted. 
There the birds make their nests. The stork has its home in a junipers. The high mountains belong to the wild goats. The crags are a refuge for the hydrax. He made the moon to mark the seasons, and the sun knows when to go down. You bring darkness, it becomes night, and all the beasts of the forest prowl. The lions roar for their prey and seek their food from God. The sun rises, and they steal away. They return and lie down in their dens. Then people go out to their work, to their labour until evening. How many are your works, O Lord? In wisdom you made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. There is a sea, vast and spacious, teeming with creatures beyond number, living things, both large and small. There the ships go to and fro, and the Leviathan, which you formed, the frolic there. All creatures look to you, to give them their food at the proper time. When you give it to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are satisfied with good things. When you hide your face, they are terrified. When you take away their breath, they die and return to the dust. When you send your spirit, they are created, and you renew the face of the ground. May the glory of the Lord endure forever. May the Lord rejoice in his works. He who looks at the earth and trembles, who touches the mountains and they smoke, I will sing to the Lord all my life. I will sing praise to my God as long as I live. May my meditation be pleasing to him as I rejoice in the Lord. But may sinners vanish from the earth and the wicked be no more. Praise the Lord, my soul. Praise the Lord. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. We listen now to our next scripture from Job, chapter 38, read by Patrick. Reading is taken out of the book of Job, chapter 38, verses 1 till 7, and verses 34 until 41. Then the Lord spoke to Job out of the storm. He said, Who is this that obscures my plans with words without knowledge? Brace yourself like a man. I will question you, and you shall answer me. Where were you when I laid the earth's foundation? Tell me if you understand. Who marked off its dimensions? Surely you know. Who stretched a measuring line across it? On what were its footings set? Or who laid its cornerstone? while the morning stars sang together and all the angels shouted for joy. Continuing at verse 34. Can you raise your voice to the clouds and cover yourself with a flood of water? Do you send the lightning bolts on their way? Do they report to you, here we are? Who gives the ibis wisdom or gives the rooster understanding? Who has the wisdom to count the clouds? Who can tip over the water jars of the heavens when the dust becomes hard and the clods of earth stick together? Do you hunt the prey for the lioness and satisfy the hunger of the lions when they crouch in their dens or lie in wait in a thicket? Who provides food for the raven when its young cry out to God and wander about for lack of food? This is the word of the Lord. And we now hear a gospel reading from Luke chapter 8, beginning at verse 22. One day Jesus said to his disciples, Let us go over to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat and set out. As he sailed, he fell asleep. A squall came down on the lake, so that the boat was being swamped, and they were in great danger. The disciples went and woke him up, saying, Master, Master, we're going to drown. He got up and rebuked the wind and the raging waters. The storm subsided and all was calm. Where is your faith? He asked his disciples. In fear and amazement, they asked one another, Who is this? He commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks 
be to God. And so as we come to the message, let's pray. Lord Jesus, as you spoke a word, we pray that you would speak your words into our life this day. As the disciples grew in their understanding who they were, of who you were, we ask that we will grow in our understanding of what it means to follow in your footsteps and to be like you. In your name, Lord. Amen. This sermon is about creation. So, so what would you say is your attitude uh, towards creation? I'm going to read out uh, four attitudes. Uh, they'll be shown on the screen, one by one. And to think about which attitude you feel most comfortable with, or feel at home with, or perhaps you would like to move towards. Number one. Ecology and environmental issues are themes that we don't necessarily need to concern ourselves with. These are complicated issues for which we cannot find a solution as Christians. We better stay out of this one. Number two. The point is that we bring people to Jesus and that people come to faith. Evangelization and discipleship are the core of living the gospel. Taking care of the environment is, therefore, not as important as these themes. And number three. We should indeed take care of creation, and I'm glad there are people who do this and see their calling in this. But... I'm glad I don't have to. And the final one, number four. Caring for the world is fundamental to the God of the Bible and his purpose for the people and the world. Hopefully these next few minutes will get us thinking further about those thoughts. We're focusing on Psalm 104, and you might have said that Psalm 104, that was a long one, as we heard it read. It is, but more importantly, it is one of the most extensive psalms in the whole of the book of Psalms, considering how much ground it covers. It gives us a grand tour of God's creation and his maintenance and sustaining of the cosmos. And it all begins, as you heard, with praise. Verse 1 and verse 35, if you, as you look at your Bibles, it begins and ends with, Praise the Lord, O my soul. In that way, it is linked to the psalm that comes before it, Psalm 103, which begins and ends in the same way. Psalm 103 gives praise for God's actions as Saviour. Psalm 104, our psalm today, gives praise for God as creator. Together these two psalms, 103, 104, form an essential theological pairing. The God of salvation and the God of creation are identified as one and the same. So a brief overview of the psalm. Uh, verses one to four. O oh Lord my God, you are very great. Uh, a writer titled his commentary on this psalm as How Great Thou Art. The worshipper in the psalm exclaims in wonder at who God is and invites us to join in with him. There is light, heavens, rain, clouds, wind, fire, flame, all natural and also meteorological occurrences. But these are described as God's garment his tent, his room in a house, his chariot. God 
our God is described as clad in radiant light, brighter than the sunniest day, brighter than the sun at the equator, brighter than the sun on a mountain as you stand above the clouds. And God has his heavenly home above the heavenly waters, we hear. And how great is our God, the psalmist declares. An earthly king would travel by chariots pulled by horses, but the Lord God makes the clouds his chariot, and it is pulled by the wings of the wind. Such images, that God is totally above any human ruler, and that God controls all natural forces. He can order the winds to deliver his messages. The flames of fire, probably lightning bolts, are his servants. How great thou art, is what the psalmist wants us to join in with at the start of his words and prayer and praise. Verses 5 to 9, creation. He sets the earth on its foundations. It cannot be moved. He is our world's creator. As we hear in Genesis 1, the waters are gathered into places. God is has control over his creation. So in those first nine verses, we hear God is great, God is creator. We see our beautiful environment ordered by God as he willed, the sea, the land, the sky. This is our world. But then the psalm moves on. We've just heard uh, that, that idea that God is a heavenly home poetic language describing where God lives, but God is not passively sitting in his upper chambers, ignoring the world or just watching it to see what happens. He is a ruler actively involved in the universe he rules. This world is not created by a deity who started it off and left it to run by itself. The verses which follow are described actually in present tenses. So this is about God's continual creative, preserving work in adapting all sorts of living creatures to their respective environments. He is creator and sustainer. So verse 10 to 13. Water is provided. Without water, plants die, animals die, and ultimately humans die. It's hard to imagine, as I preach this in February here in the Netherlands, hard to imagine any shortage of rain or water. But we can forget where the Bible was written. For those who have visited and know Israel, the dryness of the land that is there and the change that comes when the rains come. Verses 14 to 18, provider. God provides food and shelter for the humans and for the animals. But not just basic needs he provides, not just water for humans, but also he provides wine that gladdens the heart, oil that makes a person's face shine, bread to sustain the person's heart. This this poetic language is pointing us to God's generous provision, seeking a thriving of humanity. Verses 19 to 23, we hear how the seasons and therefore the patterns of life are set by God. Sun, moon, at night the animals come out, daylight man goes to work. Verses 24 to 26, God's diversity, which shows his wisdom. The psalmist just erupts in praise for God's diversity and his extravagance in creation. He just didn't make a a few creatures. I mean, how many species are there? National Geographic in 2019 did an article where they mentioned a 2011 scientific study. In that 2011 study, it was estimated that there could be up to 8.7 million species in our world. But as of 2019, when National Geographic wrote the article, they said, we had identified maybe 
1.6 million of them so far. So such extravagant diversity, and this shows God's wisdom, the psalmist says. Verses 27 to 30, God as sustainer. Creatures, including humans, look to God to sustain and to provide. We creatures do our work. We gather up what we can. We work in season and out of season. But we are totally dependent on the Creator's breath of life. And in verse 31 to 35, responses. As a person comes to the end of this hymn of praise, he says that his desire is that the glory of the Lord would never cease to be revealed in the natural world. And he prays that the Lord would remain joyful over his good creation. God has joy in creation, in his works, joy in his creating, but also in his sustaining. So this is not boring for God, his world. Our creation at its root is a place of joy for him. And so we are his servants who seek to bring him joy, the psalmist is pointing us to. We want to work to preserve and renew his world to let his glory shine forth. And the psalmist finishes by looking at the world and he sees the problem of people's sin And he prays, in effect, God's kingdom may come, as in heaven, so on earth. And he finishes with a hallelujah, praise the Lord. So that's a a very quick overview. And so think about how does this shape us and how we live today? Well, firstly, wonder and worship. As we're reading Psalm 104, It's full of amazement at the wonders of our natural world. And it's not wonder only at sensational or spectacular sights. It's also wonder at the dependable order of nature and the provision of our Creator God for all creatures and not just humans. So pondering on these things, wondering at these things, we learn wisdom. As someone said, Wisdom is generated and sustained by wonder. To wonder is to be intrigued, engaged, to behold, and to be beholden to something. It is to be held in contemplation, to be provoked into thought. To wonder is to seek to come to terms with the unfamiliar. Early European scientists had this sense of wonder. Uh, Thomas Kepler, who discovered the laws of planetary motion, spoke famously about thinking God's thoughts after him as he examined the night sky. Wonder and awe at what we see, but also about what we learn of God. As we hear the psalm and the breadth of it, the psalm is a prayer, a hymn of praise, words directed to God. And that is what psalms are, and this is one way we can involve these words in our own worship. So can we take any parts of this psalm read today and weave them into our prayers and praises this coming week? The psalmist has met with God. Creation becomes a vehicle to draw him in praise and prayer and gives them a renewed sense of responsibility. So is there a place in nature where you meet God, or have met God, or where God has spoken to you in the past? Many of us love the hymn, O Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder. And your hymnals will probably say this hymn was translated from the Russian uh, by Reverend Stuart Hind. That is correct. However, this Russian hymn was a translation of a Swedish hymn written by Karl Boberg. Karl Boberg uh, was a member of the Swedish parliament in the 20th century, but he wrote that hymn much younger. And he said in his own words, 
It was in 1885, and in a time of year when everything seemed to be in its richest colouring. The birds were singing in trees and wherever they could find a perch. On a particular afternoon, some friends and I had been to Kronobach in eastern Sweden, where we had participated in an afternoon service. As we were returning, a thunderstorm began to appear on the horizon. We hurried to shelter. There were loud claps of thunder and the lightning flashed across the sky. Strong winds swept over the meadows and billowing fields of grain. However, the storm was soon over and the clear sky appeared with a beautiful rainbow. After reaching my home, I opened my window toward the sea. The church bells were playing the tune of a hymn. And that same evening, I wrote a poem which I titled Ostora Hood, How Great Thy Art. Creation led Boberg to God. The wonder, the majesty of it shaped and informed his praise. Peter Harris and his wife Miranda founded the Christian environmental organization Arosha in 1983. In 2000, he wrote, feeling that our questions about care and responsibility for creation was not just simply, what do we do about the environment? But he felt we each needed to ask, what sort of God do we believe in? Harris argued that Psalm 104, written after the fall, it gives clear testimony for God's love and care for all creation as we know it. God cares for all and not just a human part. And so our wonder leads to worship. But worship, as Romans 12 reminds us, is not just praises on a Sunday morning. Offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spiritual act of worship. So wonder leads to worship and it shapes how we live in God's world towards God's creation. It's a working and waiting. Psalm 104 verses 20 to 22, we hear about the wild animals come out in the evening and seek their food from God as they hunt. Then they return at sunrise to their dens and humans go to work. So somehow this pattern in creation it suggests that everything balances out. It's not an image of dominance, but rather of interdependence or integration. They all have room to thrive. In Genesis 1, after God had created humankind in his image, he says, God blessed them and said to them, Be fruitful and increase in number, fill the earth and subdue it, rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. So humans are given dominion, but this is different from domination. It depends on how we see the word rule over. If we see ourselves as kings and queens of creation, if we see our world as a machine left running with humans in sole authority, then domination and exploitation follow easily. Yet God has not set the world off running like a clock and let us get on with it. We as human beings are each given authority under our creator God. We have a unique status in creation. We are made in God's image. And yet our authority is to be exercised as royal stewards. The image of God language carries this idea of being God's representative on earth. We represent him. So we are accountable always to the Lord of Lords and King of Kings for how we have exercised the authority he has given to us. So our dominion has a moral dimension. We are to exercise this authority, this dominion, in a way that reflects the character of God. We are here to look after what God has made. The words in Genesis 1 we just mentioned are also added to in Genesis 2 where the man is placed in the garden representing creation to work it and to keep it. 
The language of keeping has the idea of guarding within it. It is possible that you may read or hear people say that our motive for looking after the environment is to protect ourselves or and our children in the future. Maybe also a motivation can be said to help protect other parts of the world. While this is important, this motive is too limited, the Bible reminds us. We care for the environment because God gives us this responsibility. We are an image of God, and if we are to reflect the image of God, then we must exercise our God-given responsibility in a way that reflects the way God exercises authority. The Anglican Communion, which is a worldwide network of Anglican churches since the 1990s, has defined mission as having five marks. For the Anglican Church, the mission of the church is a mission of Christ. And these five marks are to proclaim the good news of the kingdom, to teach, baptize and nurture new believers, to respond to human need by loving service, to transform unjust structures of society, to challenge violence of every kind and pursue peace and reconciliation, and to strive to safeguard the integrity of creation and sustain and renew the life of the earth. J. Andrew Kirk, a missiologist, wrote, I believe the church at large has to endorse the findings of the World Council of Churches at the San Antonio Conference that stated, Mission in Christ's way must extend to God's creation because the earth is the Lord's. The responsibility of the church towards the earth is a crucial part of the church's mission. The psalm closed with, the glory of the Lord would never cease to be revealed in the natural world. And the psalmist prays that the Lord would remain joyful over his good creation. Those closing words of the psalm we need to consider. In an era of pollution, of environmental degradation and extinctions caused by human sin and human greed, can we still see enough of the natural world to catch a glimpse of his glory revealed in it? We now live in a world, for example, where there has been a 60% decline in the size of populations of mammals and fish, birds, amphibians and reptiles. Each of these created by God, valued by him and loved by him. Can the Lord still rejoice over his creation? God has delight at sustaining creation. And that highlights a human role for us within creation. It's incumbent upon us to ensure that divine delight is sustained. So how can we not be active in working to see changes within our world? So draw things to a close. Psalm 104 reminds us that we have many wonderful reasons for praising God in this magnificent world that he's placed us in and placed all his creatures within. We recognise the damage or degradations which our lone, uh, lovely planet has suffered and is suffering. The responsibility and mission of the church is to show through our creation care our love for the creator. We do this in our work of stewardship by all appropriate means, with the advice of scientists, the inside of Christian organizations such as a Rosh and Tear Fund, who among others have reflected upon what stewardship practically can mean day by day for a Christian in the West. And in all this, we wait for the new heavens and the new earth. There are two Greek words for new, neos, which means brand new, never seen before, and kainos, which means new in terms of quality or of nature. When Jesus speaks of new, neos, he uses that word, for example, with new wineskins. But for example, in 2 Corinthians 5, anyone in Christ is a new creation. The word kainos is used. There is continuity. You are who you are. But now there is a new quality, something unprecedented 
has happened. You are now spiritually alive. When we read about the new heavens and the new earth, the word used is kainos, a new quality to come, something unprecedented, but with continuity linked to the past. So it is not that God, God gets rid of these heavens and this earth. They are renewed, a new quality to come. That's what we look forward to and pray for to come. So when we read Psalm 104 after Psalm 103, mission is shown to be holding a fruitful, energizing balance in our understanding that God is both creator and redeemer. He calls us to care for all that he's made as well as calling us to seek to save the lost. So shall we pray? Creator God, we accept again our responsibility to be good stewards of your world. We thank you for your sustaining of life. And Lord, we ask you to send your Holy Spirit to renew this living world, that the whole creation in its groaning and striving may know your loving purpose and come to reflect your glory in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. and scatter the good seed on the land but it is fed and watered by God's almighty hand He sends the snow in winter the warmth to swirl the grain the breezes and the sunshine and soft refreshing rain all good gifts around from heaven above Then thank the Lord Oh thank the Lord For all His love He only is the maker Of all things near and far He paints the wayside flower He lights the evening star Fed. Much more to us, his children, he gives our daily bread. All good gifts around us are sent from heaven above. Then thank the Lord, oh thank the Lord for all his love. He thanked thee. Father, for all things bright and good, the seed time and the harvest, our life, our health, our food. Accept the gifts we offer for all thy love imparts, and what thou most desirest, our humble, thankful hearts. All good gifts around. Ascend from heaven above Then thank the Lord Oh thank the Lord For all His love All good gifts around us Ascend from heaven above Then thank the Lord Oh thank the Lord For all His love And so we affirm our faith now in God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, 
born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended to heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And so we now sit or kneel as Stefan leads us in our intercessions. Let us pray. Holy God, when we fail to care for our brothers and sisters, we fail you and our hearts are hardened. We recognize our responsibility to encourage and uphold one another and to live together in peace and love. We also recognize our needs and our weaknesses, and we come to you now with our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, thank you for calling some of us to be ministers, send out to do your work. We pray for all those who respond, here I am, Lord, when they hear you call. We also pray for those who have a ministry in their daily lives of work, family life, or community. For all who daily bear witness to the gospel in all that they say and do. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, we thank you for our world and the places where we live. Help us to be mindful that we are all created equal and accept, Lord, our deep regret that despite this, there is still so much inequality to be found. Help us to remember that you want us to be good stewards of your creation, living responsibly. May all future growth be sustainable and may we ensure that it is fairly shared to, for the good of all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, help us to use our influence within our families and communities to bring peace, joy and fun into people's lives instead of looking for conflict and bringing stress. Help us to be reliable and honest in what we do, and friendly to all who we meet in our daily lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, you are a friend of people in need. Your Son Jesus can free us from our burdens and heal our bodies and spirits. We pray for those who are burdened, those who are seeking healing, those in need within this church and within the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father, when death separates us from those we love and we find it hard to live without them, take from us all bitterness and resentment, Lord, and help us to remember that death has no power at all over the peace that you give and the love we shared with our departed loved ones goes beyond the grave. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Everlasting God, in the week ahead, please help us to live our lives with dignity, always giving respect, always praying before taking action, and following each action with prayers and thanksgiving. Merciful Father, accept these prayers, for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our closing prayers. In our offer offertory prayer. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have money to offer you, the fruit of our labour, and fruit of the skills you've given us. Take us and our possessions, to do your work in the world. Blessed be God forever. Amen. We continue our praying for unreached people groups each week. Lord, we lift to you the Crimean Tartars in Ukraine, the Kist in Georgia, and the Pumok in Bulgaria. We ask you, O God, to create a hunger within the hearts of these groups to know the truth 
We pray that when these people groups hear the word, they will respond with heartfelt obedience. And we ask you, Lord of the harvest, to send forth laborers to work among these peoples. In Jesus' name, Amen. Almighty God, you have broken the tyranny of sin and have sent the Spirit of your Son into our hearts, whereby we call you Father. Give us grace to dedicate our freedom to your service, that we and all creation may be brought to the glorious liberty of the children of God. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Uh, one notice to share at All Saints, uh, we're holding until the start of March a, a weekly prayer meeting on Tuesday morning, starting at a quarter past eight in the morning until 9 a.m. Uh, this is held, uh, we're using the building of the Catholic Apostolic Church at Van Machenstraat. Uh, so you'd be very welcome to join in prayer as we pray for our nation, we pray for All Saints, we pray for the worldwide church, and, and we pray for those in need. We invite you to join us at 8.15 each Tuesday morning. And so we now come to our closing song of praise. From the highest of heights to the depths of the sea Creation's revealing your majesty From the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring Every creature unique in the song that it sings All exclaiming, indescribable, uncontainable You place the stars in the sky and you know them by name You are amazing God Told every lightning bolt where it should go Or seen heavenly storehouses laden with snow Who imagined the sun and gives source to its light Yet conceals it to bring us the coolness of night can fathom indescribable uncontainable you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name you are amazing god all powerful untamable all struck we fall to our knees as we humbly Amazing
now we receive God's blessing. May God, whose Son revealed his glory to wedding at Cana, bring you the blessings of his presence. May God, whose power turned water into wine, transform your lives and make glad your hearts. And may God, who works miracle in our lives, fill you afresh with his Spirit and change you day by day to reflect his glory until you see him face to face. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you this day, now and forevermore. Amen. We finish by praying together the words of the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all this day and forevermore. Amen.